What's up, everybody? I'm Informal Geek, and we're looking at Raiders of the North Sea today, one of my absolute favorite games, which I just realized it's almost 10 years. It's been out for almost 10 years. It's pretty crazy. Um, but I've been, I haven't enjoyed it for 10 years, probably maybe like six or seven. But yeah, I love this game. It's a lot of fun and um, pretty accessible in its base game format. So what I'm going to do today is not just give you an overview of what the game is and how it plays and everything like that. I'm actually going to walk through a turn or two and just help you get a feel for what it, it's like to play the game. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing for um, between the base game and the base game with the expansions. So let's get a lay of the land here and just take a... Uh, uh, that's not it. <laughs> Why is it showing that? <laughs> game over. That was funny. Um, all right. So there's a lot to look at here. We're not going to, you know, you don't, I hope you're not feeling overwhelmed with just the appearance of like the yellow and the, all the colors and everything like that. Um, the basis of the game is taking a turn and interacting with two parts of the board. You're either going to be spending your entire turn working on this side of the board, or you're going to spend your entire turn uh, pillaging various settlements. And you're going to be looking for um, different, uh, getting different rewards and stuff like that. Let me actually plug in just the base game. So we'll get rid of the stuff that we don't need to see if we're just playing uh, the game as it is right out the box. So now the game is set up. It's got, um, there's a randomized process to put certain plunder out on the board for each of these spaces where these green numbers tell you how much goes where. That's all done already. And by the way, this is a mod I've been working on for the last few days. And I'm still tinkering with it as it, as it is right now. The only two options were base game and base game with all the expansions. The next step would be to let you pick and choose which expansion to play with and some other things like that. So I'll have a link in the description to this one if you want to try it out. But just know it's, it's going to continue to, to grow and change as time goes on because I'm learning scripting and it's been fun. And I want to get better at it, especially for games that I love. All right, enough of that. How do we play the game? So you're going to have a starting hand of five cards, couple of silvers, and uh, a black worker. The black worker can only go in spaces that support the black worker. There's gray workers and, and white workers. And the, the, the way that your turn works is you put the worker into a location, you take the action, and then you have to pull a different worker off of the board, and then you take that action. All right, so let's let's kind of play through a couple of basic turns here. So this is my starting card. Let's look at the anatomy of these cards. Um, if you'll notice, these cards are in my hand and they're not on this board. This board does come with an expansion, but I use it even in base games just as a placeholder uh, for your crew because you can only have a max size of five crew. Uh, the top up here is not important. Um, you're not going to need that for a base game, but this is a nice, easy way of visualizing who's in your crew. This is just a placeholder for offering tiles, and this is just a reminder that out of the individual resources, the, the, the cards, the silver, and the plunder, in each category, you can only have up to up to eight of them. Um, and then you've got a slot for your black worker, because on your turn, you've only got one thing to do. <laughs> it's a complex one thing. So uh, let's go back to the cards here. So the anatomy of a card is um, up on the top left. This tells you how strong that card is. How much strength it gives you to towards your total strength uh, when the card is is a member of your crew okay uh, the silver cost is the cost that you have to pay in order to get that person into your crew and uh, the the bottom left side of the card tells you what ability um, you have when that person is in your crew um, and then the bottom right is for a different action which we'll get to in just a second here all right, so that's the anatomy. So let's see, let's, let's just kind of walk through a turn here. So I, everyone starts with the black worker. So you're not allowed to go to the armory or the longhouse because they require advanced workers. You just don't have them right now. And you cannot go to a place that already has uh, a worker on it. And uh, during setup, these three places are automatically, they're always going to be seated uh, with black workers. So really, the choice is which of these three locations do I want to go to? Okay. If I go to the mill, because I'm using the black worker, I'm going to get one provision. It gets better when I, when I have more advanced workers, but this one's okay. Inversely, the silversmith is best when I'm using a black worker, because I get three, three silvers. And then the last option is the barracks. 
which is the place you have to go to in order to be allowed to add a member, uh, a card from your hand into your crew. So let's say I wanted to start with the barracks. Knowing that I've only got two silver, I can really only work with these three characters. So the, the decision is really about their, their ability. So these two are very, very similar. This one's going to give me, I have to pay one less provision when I raid an outpost. This one I pay one less provision when raiding a monastery. Okay. So if I look at where those are on the board, I've got outposts over here. I got an outpost right over here and I've got two monasteries. So these all are going to have different ranges of costs, but they're not things I'm going to be doing early in the game. So I don't know if I really want to spend uh, my silver to get them onto my crew right now. This one will give me one additional victory point for every life stuff at the end of the game. So these are all not really good cards for me to bother with at the moment. Uh, I get victory points at the end of the game for every offerings tile, and I get one victory point whenever I raid a monastery. So by and large, I'm not really looking at any immediate awesomeness that's coming by having them in my crew. So instead, what I think I'll do is I'll invest in uh, some silver. So I'm going to go ahead and put myself there. I'm going to get three silver. So boom, boom, boom. And actually, I'll take the two that I started off with in the game and put it over here too. So now I've got a total of five silver. Okay. Now that I've done that, my, the next part of my turn is I have to pull a worker off of the board. It can be any color so long as I have access to it. Right now, I've only got access to these three. If I take this one, I'm, I have to choose between discarding a card from my hand to get two silver or discarding two cards from my hand to get a gold. Uh, we'll talk about gold later. If I take this guy, then I'm allowed to just draw two cards from the top of the deck. And if I choose the town hall, then I'm allowed to play one card from my hand for its um, bottom right action, which is the same symbol as this one, as the town hall. So you can see this over here. So if I do the town hall, I can, I can actually discard this card to gain a provision and a silver. I can swap an equal amount of cards with an opponent. Uh, that could be real fun. <laughs> I can use any building's action as if I had a worker there. Um, I could lose a livestock to gain an iron. I don't have livestock. And I may make an offering by paying one less plunder or silver. Hmm. Uh, that means I could... Uh, I don't have anything I can do for those. So uh, offerings are ways for you to use the plunder that you get from these um, pillaging uh, moments in order to turn them in for uh, more victory points than they're worth at the end of the game. So it's one strategy to go down. Um, I do like this one here, where I get to use a use a worker, use a building as if your worker were there, because uh, that will let me get past. Um, I think that lets me bypass the color requirement. Use any building's action as if you your worker were there. Oh no, I think it's the same one. So it's the worker that I placed here. I get to use it as if I put the action there. That's not all that helpful for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gatehouse. So I take the worker, put it back on my mat. That's going to be the worker I use to begin my next turn. And then I draw uh, two cards. So we'll go one and I'm two. I was going to use the draw action, but I forgot what color I was. And that's the end of my turn. We're going to go over to Red's turn and they're going to be facing a hello. What's going on here? All right. It's not going to let me do that. That was weird how it was broken. There we go. Well, it's kind of loud. Sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and put our two silver over there as well. Now we've got a black worker to use. And so this, the options are similar, but not exactly the same. I can't get silver right now, if you notice that. I could still go to the barracks. And uh, I don't have any card. I have this guy. He, he costs two. Once per raid, you may re-roll one die. That's pretty handy. Uh, if killed in a raid, gain a victory, no, victory points, victory points, livestock. Yeah, actually, that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and just do that because none of these cards are, these are mostly end game cards and they're really expensive and I don't have access to silver. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this guy out there. So we're going to go ahead and I put my worker in the barracks and we're going to add this guy to our crew. He costs two silver, so I will pay the two silver into the bag. And uh, now I have to pull a worker off of the off of the board here. And actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and take this one off of the board. So let's do that. And because it was a black worker on that location, I'm going to get three silver. One, two, three. Oops, that's four. I should have 
broken them up before I did that. There you go. All right, now that's the end of my turn. So already you can see the turns are pretty snappy. Um, I think there's a little bit of AP, but if you're playing with three or four players, not much on the board state changes. Um, I think there is a little bit of a delay in gameplay with three or four players because, you know, if I just took my turn right now as a red player, I can't really plan exactly what I want to do on my turn because I have no idea which of these aces will be available when it comes back to me. So let's just take that in, into mind. But as a two-player game or even three-player game, excuse me, this game is really good for that. All right. Now we've got back to our regular black worker. What can I do? Well, let's, let's start looking at what we want to pillage and why we would want to pillage. So uh, the easier to places the please the easier places to access are the harbors. They don't have a lot of costs. So for example, if I if I had a gray or a black worker, I can go and enter, and pillage one of the harbors. Um, I can pillage any one of the three that I want, so long as I put my worker there. It's going to give me one victory point. I have to pay three provisions, and I cannot do this action unless I have at least two members, two cards um, as my crew. I need to have a crew size of two. Gosh, that's what I was trying to say. And these are my choices for uh, rewards. All of the harbor places will give you gray workers, uh, but they have different rewards. Like this one looks pretty nice over here. So I need, to, I need to have one provision and a crew size of three, and here's two and two, okay? So I can start building a strategy that will allow me to do that. Maybe I don't care exactly which crew members I bring because at the moment, Strength is not important. I just need to have crew members. So let's uh, let's play with that idea. Um, let's go ahead and get a provision. So we'll go there. We'll give ourselves one provision. And remember that the max is eight of each type. So I've got one provision and five silver. And then I'll pull the barracks one off. And that will let me add a member to our crew. So let's start with a cheap one. Uh, even though, let's see, gain two victory points in the game. Yeah, let's just pay for this one. He's. Let's do this one, actually. We'll do the, the. Yeah, we'll do this one for one. So we'll pay for the one and get him, pay that coin out of there. All right, so that's our turn. We we got the provision and we, we added a member to our crew. Now we go back to the red player and we're in a similar position where we've got three silver. Uh, we have one crew member. Um, we need at least two and some provisions. So let's try and think of another person to add to our crew. Um, kind of like this one, it's not too not too expensive. This, I mean, three for three is, is, is pretty good and we probably were gonna build our strategy around monasteries. So let's try and get that member to add it to our member to our crew. We need three and we've got three. So uh, let me get my worker. There we go. So I will go ahead and um, yeah, I'll add to the barracks as well. So I'll pay my three. One. Two, three. Which makes me think I should probably not have these as stackable. I'll modify my, my mod to do that. Um, we pay for that. That's added over here. And then we'll pull the mill worker off and get a provision. There we go. Now it's the green player's turn. So the turns so far are pretty, pretty pretty um basic i guess because you're just building up your engine now eventually you're going to have um provisions and crews and crews okay so why would i want certain provisions um not provisions certain plunders over other ones well um first off you can trade them in as offerings so if you went to the longhouse with a gray or a white you can start turning them in um, normally at the end of the game every two livestock gives you one point so I'm looking at converting one point plus I think iron gives you one point each as well at the end of the game, turning basically three points at the end of the game into six. That's pretty good, right? Or even over here, I would need to have a second livestock just to get one point here. And I think this is just one more, one more point. So if you're a resources and I get better points, these are pretty good things to do. Um, iron has another, uh, let's come back to iron in a second. Um, so if I wanted to start going after these other locations, like this outpost over here, I need a gray worker first off, and then I need to have three provisions and I need to pay those provisions. I need to have a crew size of three. doesn't matter how many, I'm not going to lose them immediately, but I can do that. And then I'm going to total up all of the strength, which is the red banner all of the strength on my cards, and I'm gonna roll the red dice and add that value to my strength. 
So let's imagine I went to battle right now, which I wouldn't do, but if I did, I would have a crew strength of five, and then I would pick one of these dice, and then I would roll it, and I would add three. That makes it a total of eight. That's going to give me zero points. So that's why you would need a third member on here. So if I had any of these other third members, oh, I'm losing the wrong people. You know, if I had one of those fours on there, um, that's that'd be I'd be in pretty good shape, right? Because I would have um, what, what did it say? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I would I would have met the ten point minimum, and I would have gotten two points, which it's two points compared to the one of the harbor. Um, but really, what you're trying to do is get access to more gray workers or even a white worker to do different things. And uh, and the rewards up here get a little bit. They're all the same types of items, but these will dry up. Um, and then you're going to be looking for outposts. I'm going to try and combo um, outposts or monasteries so I get extra victory points based off of the crew members. This one says um, I gain a victory point when raiding a monastery. Some of these give you bonuses when they die while um, uh, encountering certain um, monasteries or outposts and stuff. So those are things to keep into consideration is you're going to be getting the, the rewards. Um, there, so there are three types of plunder. There's the livestock, the gold, and the iron. There's Valkyries on the board. They're not plunder. These represent the defenses um, and, and basically the casualties faced when uh, pillaging this location. So if I were to take this location here, this Valkyrie would mean I would get to bump up myself on this gray track and I would have to lose one of my crewmates. They've been sent to Valhalla and I earn glory <laughs> through the story of my game where if I send a lot of crewmates to that, you know, they've just a lot of crewmates have died along the way. I can get a pretty decent amount of points over there for the end of the game. So um, some of these actually will give you uh, different abilities where, you know, like this guy here, for example, uh, if you, if he gets killed in a rain, you get an extra point. Um, Gain additional, yeah. So like, there's that kind of stuff too, where it's like, you know what? I'm okay with losing. Um, I need to lose a guy. I'll just lose this one because he'll give me at least an extra victory point. But I get to bump up the track. So there's that. It's not a fantastic feeling of of going to a place and having your crew members die, but definitely near the end of the game, visiting these places that have two Valkyries, especially one that has that might have three, uh, it can be really powerful. I'll give you an example. Let's say you, over the course of the game, you've faced four of them already, and you're at the end of the game. You probably only got one turn left. You have just enough resources to go after, you know, you know, a couple places. Maybe you go after a place like this, and you just lose two members of your crew. The two crew members, they're not going to give you victory points at the end of the game, or even just by dying. But you get to move from here to four to six. So you just jumped up six points. You would have you would have earned four points at the end of the game. Now you have ten. So going after Valkyries at the end of the game, that can be pretty sweet. And um, the last but not least, I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, what do the gold and the iron do for you besides um, the offerings? Um, iron can be used at the armory to, you would go here with a gray or white worker, spend one iron, and you would gain two armory, and you would go up the track by two. Wherever you are on this track, you add that to your total strength. So earlier when I said I was a strength of five, if I were here, I would have a strength total strength of seven before I rolled the dice. So going up on this track is also really helpful. And if you hit certain uh, milestones, then at the end of the game, you'll earn however many points you're at. So if you ended at six or seven, you would earn four points at the end of the game. So there's a little bit of an incentive there, but mostly mostly people will use their iron uh, at this location to make succeeding at these higher ones really. Look at this one. You get 10 points if you have a strength of 32. You need four crew members and you're rolling two dice. So at most your dice is going to give you, I think, eight. So you better have a lot of strength in your units and then uh, a pretty a nice, sizable chunk here too if you're going to have any chance at that 32. But you could get 10 points out of it. Um, and that will help drive towards the end of the game. So the end of the game ends when at least... Uh, I'm sorry, there are, three, there are three types of ways of ending the game. Uh, if you'll notice, there are fortresses here. There are six spaces of fortresses. Um, once... Um, five of them have been pillaged, uh, yeah, have been pillaged, and there's only one left. That will signify the end of the game, and then certain players will get one more turn. Another way to end the game is if there are no more Valkyries on the board. If you've gone to the locations and all the Valkyries are gone, that would end the game. And then lastly, if there are no more offerings, then that would also end the game. If any of those 
if any one of those three conditions is met, players will tally out their scores between victory points, um, end game victory points like this guy or this one here will give you one victory point for each offering tile at the end of the game. So putting this person in your crew um, doesn't give you any strength for battling and stuff. But if you can get a bunch of these things completed, you get a bunch of extra points. Um, and so that's the that's the main that's the main game. I mean, you're building up your engine, and then like, oh, I didn't mention this earlier. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but you'll uh, midway through the game or so, uh, there are no there are no new black workers that come out into the game. So we start with a total of three plus one for every player. Eventually, they're gonna run dry because we probably use them to pillage harbors, and so certain actions like the mill and the silversmith. Um, will change like you're just you're, it's gonna be you're never gonna be getting really just one mill um, one provision at mills anymore but you're also not gonna be getting as much silver generated when you visit the silversmith um, and um, it's gonna be a little bit harder um, it's not gonna be a little bit harder um, it's gonna be you're gonna have you're gonna be dealing with more gray workers more often and so you've got to figure out where can I stick my gray units because I got a gray worker and I have everything I need to go attack this fortress but I've got a gray worker. Crap, I need to go, you know, pill at something else that will give me a, a white worker or hope to pick up someone else's white worker that they dropped on a previous turn. Um, and that's the cycle of the game. So uh, that's a really fun game. I, I, I think it's pretty accessible to a lot of people. There's definitely, um, a, there is a little bit of a skill gap. People who are more familiar with this game are generally going to do better than people who are brand new to it. Brand new to the game in, in like gaming in general because of the ability to um, find synergies between cards and monasteries and, and, and figuring out plans on how to spend a certain number of actions to get the crew and provisions that you need to then jump out and get to the locations before one of your opponents does. I think there's a little bit of a skill gap there. But if you're playing games, general medium, medium uh, style games, um, you can get into this game um, and have a pretty good time. I played this game with my daughter when she was eight. She's now almost 11, so we've been playing this game for a while. She's really good at it. <laughs> and even when she was eight and nine learning the game, um, she didn't she didn't really struggle that much. But I, I do understand that not every eight-year-old and nine-year-old are the same. So I just wanted to put that out there that it was intimidating at first, but we played it on the app on the tablet, and that was an easier way to learn the game and play the game and then come over to the board game um, there was a hurdle to get over of, of of not being able to rely on the game to tell you what you've got and what you can and can't, what spaces you can and get uh, touch on. And so I do think that it's, I think this is rated for 14 and higher, I think. Um, but just know that that's kind of why, that's where the complexities lie. So that's the base game of Raiders of the North Sea. Let me jump into now the, um, what makes it different with the expansions. So let's just reset this. And we're going to click on... Uh, the base expansions button here again I'm working on this mod on my own um, and so there are only buttons to play base game or both expansions and soon I'll be working on the scripting so that you can pick one or the other um, off the top I'll let you know that the fields of fame adds more to the game than Hall of Heroes I can definitely I've even taught new people this game who are who are used to playing board games like I, I'm not going to say hey uh, I got someone who's never played anything, you know, it's this or Catan, let's play this. Like, that's probably not the good choice. But um, for anyone who you think could pick up the base game based off of what you just saw, um, adding the Hall of Heroes is is almost like, I don't want to say a no-brainer, but it's just, um, it's just, it's just, it doesn't cause much of an extra teach. So let me talk, let me show you what I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm rambling when I can just show you. <laughs> So the main aspect of this of this board that you want to look at now is this bottom board. Mainly this bottom board is what's new. Um, so in addition to offerings, you've got some other um, reputation, reputation that you can earn through the game. So there's one new uh, location, oops, one new location that's been made available, and that's the Mead Hall. When you go to the Mead Hall, you have to choose... Um, to do one or the other, but definitely not both actions. All right, so you can either um, turn in or meet some criteria to earn reputation, or uh, I forget what they call it. It's something funny. It's, um, uh, what's it called? 
charming the crowd. You can either complete a quest or you can charm the crowd. Uh, basically, one of the one of the challenges with this game is if you're not getting the right cards and you go to the gatehouse, you're just drawing two cards blind off the top. There are there are a color there are a couple of other um, townsfolk that will let you draw three from the deck as an action from a town hall that you can then combo with a gatehouse to draw two more cards. So what this does is it always has three cards showing on it. So you do you are able to maybe pick and choose. Oh, I really want this person because it's cheap. Or, man, I really want this person. It's perfect for my strategy. None of these work for me. I'm going to go back to the gatehouse. It opens that up a little bit for you. And and even better, though, if you were to take, let's say, uh, the farm man right here, um, or the fer fairy man. Sorry, I know, I'm like, that doesn't look like a farmer. The fairy man. If you take the card that's in this slot, you're going to get one silver and two mead. Um, if I took the one in the middle, I would get one silver and one mead. And then at the end of the round, this slides over and a new card fills in the spot. So over time, the cards that were ignored do get a little bit juicier with the mead. All right. So mead is an awesome resource because it will let you add to your strength. So let's say... Um, I'm, 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 I'm planning on going to battle this outpost and I'm, I'm really right around eight. Um, I might, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I might, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I might do the eight. I might actually want to get closer to 14. Um, and I've got three or four mead over there. So what you can do is you can uh, assign any number of mead to any members of your crew before you roll the dice. And and for every and each one of the meads is adding one to your strength. Uh, you don't get to keep it; you drink it. You're just gone. It's a disposable resource. You can have as much of it as you want stockpiled. Actually, no. I'm sorry. You can only have up to eight stockpiled, uh, and so you do want to eventually be spending it. But it could be just enough to get you from one milestone to the other. Um, but again, you do have to blind commit to that to using it before you roll the dice. So that's another fun, easy thing to do. It does come with a bunch more cards with new abilities and stuff like that. So just take that into consideration. But the abilities themselves are not that crazy. Like here's two of them that came exclusive with individual expansions. This one here um, says you gain a victory point if killed in a harbor raid. Pretty straightforward. And you get to add any one plunder to an unrated harbor. So I might take that action... Um, and, and there's a there's generally a supply of plunder that's left over. You can take one from over there, add it to a location to make it more attractive, and uh, maybe you can get to it on your next turn. Maybe you can't. Maybe you can attract someone to go in there instead of where you, you think they would have gone it um, alternately. There's a little bit more to do here. Uh, I want to talk about that one because that comes with the other expansion. Anyway, so that's one, one thing you can do. Um, where the reputation comes into play is after we've plundered. So normally... When you plunder a location, um, let's say for that example, this one, right? These will go away and you've got an empty spot. Now that you're dealing with this expansion, uh, some quests will come out and a quest will appear in that location. Okay. You're not going to do anything else other than, um, what am I trying to say? Like you're going to go to, what am I trying to say? When you go to the mead hall, um, when you go to the mead hall, you're going to pick any quest that's out on the board, okay? And you're going to pay the cost in strength with cards from your hand. Not your crew, not your armor rating, and not meat. Only cards from your hand. So if I want to pay, if I want to achieve this one, it has six strength, I'm going to need to get rid of some cards. And maybe I don't actually have enough. <laughs> I don't have enough. I have five at most over here. Uh, this player, let's see what they have. Uh, this post, this person has, yeah, seven. Maybe they want to get rid of this, these two cards. They don't need two. So they could go to the mead hall, take an action, discard these two cards. Again, you cannot use your armor rating or mead or anything else. Discard those two cards because it meets, it's at least six. And they can take this from the board and add it to their section above their player board. So this is not used... This space up here is not used in the base game, but only in this expansion and, and above. And they add it there. When you complete the quest, you also get the immediate benefits below it. So they would gain one uh, livestock and one silver from the supply. 
and add it to their thing, uh, add it to their, their own supply. And at the end of the game, they're going to get one point. Um, so if you can go after multiple quests throughout the game, maybe you're going to, you'll put one here. You'll eventually start from the left, building out to the right. And wherever you end is what victory points you get. So if I had, I'm just going to use the copy. If I had this example here, um, I would get five points at the end of the game. Okay. Um, now, if you are, I'm just using clones, obviously, but uh, if you are able to complete um, at least three of of any kind, there's uh, there are three different types of quests in the game. There's what they call uh, military, um, escorting, and stealing, I think. So there, there are three types of them. If you can get three of any one type, so in this case, let's just imagine I had three of the military might, ones, then when I visit the Mead Hall uh, and I complete my third my third one that I needed for it, in addition to that, I'm allowed to take any one of these reputations uh, for free. And they come with some really powerful things. This one gives me three silver. This one gives me four Mead. This one gives me three cards off the top of the deck. Or this one here is I don't have to pay any silver uh, in order, and I can just take an offering. I don't have to pay any of the silver on that's on the offering. I can get this one for a gold, I think is what that means. Uh, and there's a, a bunch of them in here. There's eight more. There's not a bunch of them, but there's eight more. I can get two points, um, get resources. I can hire someone to my crew for free right now. Um, and I can get two armory and, and stuff like that. So this is really good things. And on top of them giving you the reward for them, they also add to your track. So by completing this one, I would have gained a livestock and a silver, and I would have earned this one for an extra ability, and now I've got more points going to the end of the game. You can collect more than you can fit on the track, but you'll never earn more points after that. You'll get the rewards for them and so on, but end game points will be maxed at 16. So this is just another way of using the plunder that you're getting uh, on the board to do different things, not just offerings, um, but sometimes you just like, oh man, the timing's not good. I got a good crew size. I don't have, I don't have enough provisions. But you know what I do have is I have a couple of cards in here that I, I don't like. I can just throw them away. I'll go to the meat hall and I'll just claim this quest and you know get some rewards for it. So that's a really good way of just adding on to what I think is the base game. And I think it adds a lot of I think it adds a lot more fun because you get to combo certain things together. And the meat is always a nice thing to do to help you succeed and do better. So that's the Hall of Heroes. Um, if you're going to be playing, if you have access to that expansion, like I, I would never play without it uh, for the most part, unless I, I take a hard look at my audience, then maybe I wouldn't play with it. But I think this is something you can play with every single time and have a good time with it. The Fields of Fame expansion is different. Um, I still love playing with it, and if I had a choice, I would play every game with it. I think it's intriguing. I think it gives you more options. Overall, I think it's fun, but it does add more to the teach, which you're about to learn. Uh, it's a new track called the Fame track over here in purple. There's a new deck of card of Jarls, and there are new plunders. There are Jarl plunders being added out there. So it dilutes um, these types, having the Jarls out there does dilute um, the plunder that gets assigned out there because you're just going to have more of these Jarls in different places. And it can really um, uh, change the ecosystem for your strategy game points. They're similar to Valkyries um, in a way where you could lose units. Uh, so Valkyrie immediately just lose the unit, go up the, go up the glory track. Yaros, you have to make a decision. So let's imagine that I attacked this harbor space over here. I got two gold, an iron, and, and a Yarl. I would take the Yarl, and I'd have to choose where I'm gonna where I'm gonna be putting this. Um, and I have three actions I could take. I could try to kill the Yarl. I could try to subdue the Yarl, or I can just flee from it. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is um, I'll talk about these actions in a little bit more, but this is a this can be a tough decision um, for people because of the the cost with it. We'll come back to that in just a second. 
Um, the Jarl cards are shuffled, and then you only draw cards from the Jarl when you've got to resolve one of these tokens, and you're going to draw one for every token. So if I were to pillage this outpost, I'd be drawing two of those cards, and then I have to deal with both of them in some way. Uh, some way. So let's take a look at these. Um, they look very similar to your regular cards. They've got cost and strength if you were to add them to your crew. Uh, you can, if you add them to your crew, they give you an ability, but unlike the other ones that have a play ability on the bottom right, this one has the red X one, and that's where you get, you're basically killing the Arl. So if you can kill the Arl, you get this reward, and that's gaining two provisions. If you subdue the Arl, then you're going to add the Arl to your crew, and you'll get, you'll get them for their strength, and you get them for their ability. Or, or, or you can just flee from the Jarl. So let's talk about this now. Um, this The rewards here are purple tracks. So here, uh, if you kill the Jarl, let me just double check. I want to make sure I say this correctly. Okay. Um, here we go. So um, when you kill a Jarl, you have to take wound equal to the Jarl's military strength plus one. So what does that mean? And this is why it's a little bit harder to teach. I would not recommend it for first time players. So I take the strength, add one to it. That's a total of six. I have to take six wounds from this thing and I have to apply them to my crew members. Okay. And if you take on, um, I believe it's equal to, but if you take on wounds equal to or greater than your strength, they're dead. So I could spend one here and one here to kill these two off, and then the last two or whatever, I'm just making it up, it's six. Let's just imagine I had two left over, I go here, okay? Excuse me, sorry. Um, so they would die and they would be discarded and have them out of my crew. Uh, the downside to this is that when they die this way, I do not get to bump up the glory track because they were not killed by Valkyries, okay? And for every wound that's on a card, it reduces its strength. So this is no longer a four. Now this is a two. Okay. So that's a little that's a little annoying as well. Um, but because I was able to kill that Jarl and I'm dealing with the effects of the Jarl itself, I gain two fame, and I would bump up this track to there. Now, off the top of the bat, uh, off the bat, like this isn't all that powerful. It's like, man, I just took all those wounds, made myself so much weaker, all for one victory point. That sucks. But it doesn't take long for you to go from four to six or even eight, and you'll be scoring nine points at the end of the game up to 15. And that's only one way to gain um, fame. Um, subduing is where you are going to be taking wounds, but it's one less than the card's value. So this is a value of five strength. It would be, I would be taking four wounds, doing the exact same thing uh, that I did before with my wounds. And I get to add the Jarl to my crew, which can be pretty nice. Sometimes you'll, you'll have a crew size of five and you'll you know, I'm thinking, oh, I'm taking four wounds. You know what, buddy? You're going to go ahead and take all four wounds. And now you're dead. And I'll bring in my... Now I have got space for my Jarl, too. And again, sometimes... Um, even this guy here, he says, take one less wound when killing a Jarl. So that, that could be helpful. If I had him in my crew, he's going to make it easier to kill these guys. So there's some synergies there. Uh, and lastly, it's fleeing... Uh, there's no other penalty other than the fact that you must discard a card from your hand. And if you do that, you then have to choose to lose a victory point or lose a fame point. So that's pretty straightforward. You're always going to have to draw a card and then you can choose which order to deal with them or even just to flee. So sometimes, sometimes taking out like, um, let's see if there's a juicy one up here. Yeah, sometimes taking out this harbor might not be too bad. Because you're going to get a gray worker, it doesn't cost you a lot of points, you get two gold out of it, and you deal with the Jarl, and you look at the Jarl, and you're like, nah, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'll just go ahead and flee and lose a victory point and, and be done with it. And that's not too bad. All right, and then with that expansion comes three new spaces that you can go to. So now you've got townships, uh, very, very similar in functionality. You know, you meet the criteria, you get the victory points. 
um, everything here functions exactly the same, except now if you overkill, you get points. If you overkill a threshold, the max, I think it's the max threshold by four. So if I had 16, I would get four victory points and one fame. If I went and beat up on this town shul, down ship with a, with a strength of 24. So let's let's back up a little bit. Instead of going after a fortress, which requires a white worker and a lot more stuff I, to get seven points. If I think I can bring 24 there, I might go here instead, beat up on this one for four, only get four victory points, not really have to pay for anything, get better benefits out of it. I didn't even have to have a white worker for that. And I'm going to get four points for that plus move up three on this track. Well, if I'm sitting at five, that's one, two, three. I'm not one. I'm now one fame away from doubling my victory points for that. So these these spaces can be pretty pretty sweet. Um, and I'm not a hundred percent sure, but let me double check. It's been a while since I played with this particular expansion. Um, let's see, in a culture, blah blah blah. When... Yeah. So. What's really nice is that uh, I mentioned I was doing it in an example of these townships, but the abilities of the overkill, overkill by a certain amount and then get the fame, that applies to every one of these locations. It's even uh, actually not so much the, the harbors because they don't have a strength requirement. So not just the townships, but all this. And that is really fun to do. Again, more of a teach to explain. But uh, after you've got a game under your belt, adding this is pretty, pretty clean. It does lengthen the game, though, because you've got to add the time it takes to resolve the Jarls. Um, the game does say that everyone's supposed to have their own board and that these are supposed to stay there. Um, I don't remember if there's a card that says gain points for however many uh, Jarls you killed. Uh, but if that's the case, um, then you just have to... I think what I'll do is I'll probably bring... I'm going to look at the cards again and, and maybe I'll just bring these counter back counter boards back i was just trying to make it more communal in this workshop but never mind that uh, that's how this is played if, if you were to purchase this in real life everyone would have their own encounter boards and you'd keep your yarl tokens on that board and that's the gist of the whole experience you're going to be still doing the same cycling of going to places putting a worker down getting in action pull a worker up but now you've got way more choices on both sides of the equation up front with getting more strength and 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 more consistent uh, or more like predictable cards. Uh, you can go here to interact with places that have been pillaged and complete quests. And, and all it requires is just discarding cards. I mean, you're getting a card, you can get a couple of cards here, no problem. Or you can go after some of these really uh, dangerous Jarl cards. Uh, take some, you know, take some more wounds, but go up this track is uh, can be pretty divisive. Um, and even if you don't do anything with the Yaros, and even if you don't do anything with the new spaces, you can still go and try and overkill these things. And that in itself is really fun. By ignoring the Yaros, getting super powerful, um, going to like, a, you know, I'm, man, I, I have all this strength. It's a waste for me to not to go after this fortress. I can probably do 34. You know what? I'll just take that to an outpost, get the four points and bump. I mean, it's a... Uh, these are a lot of good choices. So, I mean, hopefully you can see why I like this game so much. Hopefully it's something that you can feel for yourself that you might have fun with it too. Uh, but give it a try if you get a chance. This is a uh, link to this mod is in the description of the video. So you can try out my mod there. Again, it's probably going to change as time goes by. We'll see how much time I want to put into the scripting. Man, I've been talking for a while, but this is such a fun game. It's worth it. So uh, hopefully you're getting a lot out of it and uh, you get a chance to play it. So yeah, with that, I'm going to leave you to it and say thank you for watching and hope this has been very helpful for you and we'll catch you next time. Bye.